Hello everyone, welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. And today I have my amazing husband on this video with me today. And <laughs> we're gonna be talking about respect and reverence. Um, Daddy, you wanna introduce yourself? How y'all doing, man? I am Spencer Parker, Sharonda Parker. Anything else you wanna say? How y'all doing today? Okay. It's a beautiful day to be married. It is a beautiful day. So, we had a lot of amazing things that happened this weekend. Huge shout out to Swag Her Magazine for um, featuring um, the Feminine Touch Wife School in their uh, publication this weekend. That was absolutely amazing. Um, so, the article is posted on my page. Check it out. The reason I did not post this video in the group today and I opted to go on my regular Facebook to post this video today is because I think that this particular video, which it will be on YouTube, I think this video will benefit any and everybody who decides to watch it, whether you are married, whether you're single, um, like it, it doesn't matter. I just feel like at this point, it can benefit anyone. Um, before I get into this video, the workbooks are in. Yeah, I'm so excited. We have, I have like a whole box of them. Um, and this is the Feminine Touch Wife School Workbook. And y'all, first of all, thank you, baby. My husband, first of all, let me just say this here. When, when God gives me the vision, I go to my husband. I told my husband, I was like, okay, you know, this is everything that's going on with, with um, the direction that I need to go in. I need the photo shoot. I need you to create the workbook. I need you to be able to do my layouts. I need you to do everything. And this is the end result of what my husband put together for me. So yes, this is a, it's a real workbook. So when you register for the class, you will have a workbook that will be mailed out to you. Yeah, I told y'all when she come to me, she'd be like, I need a spaceship. Uh-huh. I, I need a rocket. And then by the end of the day, I'll be what? She'd be riding a rocket. Uh-huh. I'll be flying. <laughs> All right. So yesterday I did a, like a little brief video on, um, respect and reverence. When I woke up yesterday, God gave me two words. He gave me respect and he gave me reverence. And he told me that I needed to explain exactly what the two were because sometimes people use them in one to replace the other, but the words are similar, but they are not the same. So respect is the way we mentally feel about somebody or a situation or a thing, meaning it's how I think about it. I esteem it in my mind. The way I feel about it before I even, in other words, you could be out in the public and because you have respect for your family, your mother, your husband, your family name, you act a certain way because you mentally respect it. Okay. Reference is the action behind it. So because I respect my husband, because I respect him, I serve him first. So the reference is the serving him first part on the finest that I have to offer. Now, yesterday I had someone and she said, I wholeheartedly agree with everything you're saying, but I don't feel like me serving my husband first has anything to do with the way I respect him. And my, and my, my rebuttal is you can mentally esteem him all you want to, but if you can't reverence it, meaning show it, yeah. what does it mean? So the reason I brought my husband on today was because I want you to hear from him from a male's perspective of what it means when his wife reverence him. Because it's one thing for me to respect you, but it's another for me to reverence you. Yeah. So you got the floor. Okay. So basically from my point of view, what, what, what reverence is, is us being able to communicate on a level that is basically free of all confusion because it's an order, it's a hierarchy. You know what I'm saying? So she may have certain ideas or certain ways she thinks things ought to go. I have a certain way I think things ought to go. It only becomes an issue when we disagree, right? So if 
we talk this out, right, and we come up with a conclusion, and I say, you know what, I don't like that, this is what we're going to do, right? Reverence is her saying, you know what, I'm going to follow your lead, and I'm not going to give you all of these issues and problems about why I think you ought to listen to me and all of this type of stuff. It's just that we, I'm going to back you. I'm going with what you say, and, and this is what we're going to stand on, good, bad, or indifferent. That's how we're going to go. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to look back on it and, 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 and talk about, oh, well, you was wrong and I was right. and Because all of that plays a part in it. You got to move forward, you know what I'm saying, with the decision that you make and not look backwards if it don't work out, you know what I'm saying, because it very well could. Okay. So let me ask you this here because this, I think a lot of people get this confused when we get to talk about men being the head and men leading. When a man is the head and he's leading, whose best interest is he's who? Whose best interest is he looking out for? When a man leaving, he's looking out for everybody else's best interest, like not his own, really. Because like I was explaining to like we have family day every Sunday, and uh, I was explaining to them on family day how men would take on roles and responsibilities that put them in harm's way for the greater good of their family because they know that they got to do stuff. You know, they know that they have people dependent on them. So you'll go out there and do something, you know, not necessarily, you know, to benefit yourself, but you know, it's been, a, it's going to benefit your family. So this is what you got to do to sustain yourself, to sustain your family. And this is, this not saying that, oh, I'm going out there on no frivolous shit. You know what I'm saying? Just going out there to, 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 to get, to, to provide for myself. It's not even a thought. You thinking about everybody else involved. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's a selfless act. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you said that word because a lot of times in marriage, people don't understand that marriage requires you to be selfless. Not just when I'm speaking, I'm always speaking to women because that's my primary audience. But marriage requires you to be selfless, meaning that you really not even thinking about you. You're looking out for the greater good of the legacy yeah. as a whole. But I don't think a lot of people really understand. Like, I don't think a lot of women really understand how men are really selfless in a lot of things that they do. Because, like, men have to go, you hear it all the time, men have to go through a lot at their jobs. Men have to go mm -hmm. through a lot when they get home. And we are just taught to provide right mm -hmm. but women are also taught that we are providers so they feel like they don't have to provide anything for us because we are the provider mm -hmm. and it's just like you could have a hard day at work and then come home and you will have a hard day at home and nobody gives a shit right mm -hmm. because you would have provided. You're not supposed to be providing anything. They're not supposed to be providing anything to you. Oh, so basically what you're saying is, it's this mentality that men don't need anything. Like, we don't need to do anything for you because you the man and you're supposed to be the one that's going out there making it happen for everybody. Yeah. So what we need to give you anything for? Yeah, it's like what you, it's like we don't have feelings. Mm -hmm. And if you show any feeling, it's you weak, you're mm -hmm. gay, you're, mm -hmm. you're this, that, and the other, but at the same time, you won't the same type of reverence that he's seeking. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You want to be acknowledged. You want to be, you want your emotions, you know, catered to. You want all of these things to go on with you, but you won't return that. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and men see that right off the bat. Like, we, we notice, like, okay, the children get your time, your job get your time, the kitchen get your time, mm -hmm. everything get your time, but when it comes time for me, you're tired. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or you feel like, the husband is just supposed to just be understanding. Yeah, you're just supposed to understand. I have to deal with this, this, that, and the other. But, I mean, he have feelings, too. He have needs. He have desires. All that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you following the blueprint that was already designed and set before us, mm -hmm. none of that has to take place. Okay, so let's talk about this blueprint. Because a lot of times people, when I, I was just in the wife group and I had to actually remove a wife this morning because... If you're in my wife group, the one thing that you know is I am a faith-based teacher. And it's certain principles that I teach on and I don't stray from certain principles. And one principle that I teach about is the man, the husband being the head. And the thing that she wanted to combat me on was, no, he's not the head. We are equal. And I told her, I said, well, sweetheart, I'm going to have to let you know that this is my classroom. And I follow a certain doctrine. In other words, God holds me responsible. 
I have to correct you and I have to remove you because I cannot afford for you to contaminate the group. Right? But the thing is, man is the head. And if when you're in this class, you're going to see that... Wait one second. One second. I'm going to authority because we, we're going to learn about authority and the role of authority. Understanding that your husband is the leader of the family. Everything has a head. Government has a head. Any institution, if you go to a prison, there's a head. If you go to a school, there's a head. Everything has a head. When you go to church, there's a head. How do you feel like you don't have to have a head in your household? In your household? And, and, that, and, it, and so go back to respect and reverence. When you respect your husband in a certain type of way and you mentally feel a certain type of way, it does not bother you for you to acknowledge that he is the head because you, you, um, you respect his role, his leadership. In other words, you trusting that he's going to make the right, right decisions for you, for you and everybody, in, every, the everybody in your household. Like, what's the point of being with somebody who you don't trust and they didn't vow to take care of you and your life? Like they, they supposed to be able to. You're supposed to be able to trust that they'll lay down their life for you. Okay, so let's let's stop right here. What I have seen is so many women in my generation, keep in mind, you got to look at the history of certain things. The women in my generation, this was the crack cocaine era. This was when our men lost their mind. The, our fathers, the people that was the generation ahead of us, yeah. Okay, so we had mothers and a lot of the men that they were with, a lot of these men had all kind of substance abuse problems. A lot of them uh, got caught up in the um, mandatory minimum sentencing to where the husbands was removed out the household, went to prison. So that means that made the women uh, single parents. And then when you're dealing with drug and alcohol abuse, a lot of times that uh, turns into physical and verbal abuse in the household. Mm -hmm. So to be honest with you, a lot of you have not seen men in their best element because when you grew up, it was during one of the hardest times for black people, especially black people, because drugs hadn't came on the scene and, and our people had never seen anything like that before. Yeah. We had never seen anything like that before. And that's just the truth. So you grew up and you saw your mama trying to cater to somebody who had problems. You saw your mama getting her ass whooped by somebody who had problems. And I'm not excusing it. And I'm not saying that it was uh, right. But what I'm saying is that ain't your reality right now because your husband ain't whooping your ass. Your husband ain't on crack cocaine. Your husband ain't got all of this stuff going on that your daddy or your stepdaddy had. So you got this defense put up about men based on what you have seen growing up. When that's not your reality today. But you holding the man in your life responsible for all the shit you saw your daddy or your stepdaddy or your mama boyfriend do. And that's what we don't understand as men. Because we come into relationships with a whole clean slate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if we was the worst scum of the earth in the last relationship, mm -hmm. right? You can be a completely different man in the next one. Oh, women don't understand that because they say, I don't understand how he was with me for five years. And he treated me like this and he did this, 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 that, the other for five years. And he, he done been with her for five months. And he done took her to another country. He whining and dining her. And, it's, and my thing is, but you don't understand that this woman may be bringing out the best, a, a, the best in this man. You know what it is? Reverence. I can almost guarantee you when he over there with her, he getting respect and she treating him accordingly. And when she bringing that food to him, she serving him on a what? On a real plate. On a real plate. Her attitude her, determines her, her attitude. Her attitude is determining the attitude. She's speaking life into him. She positive. And guess what? You'll talk about some well, I ain't I'm not planning no trip. He a man, he got the Google and the internet just like me. But I get you, I bet you one thing, she ain't got no problem with planning a trip and saying, baby, look, this is how much it's going to cost. This is when we're leaving out. And, and this is what we're going to do. And guess what? He allows her to lead in that area because that may be her strength. Yeah. 
play off each other. You play off each other. It's not all about uh, me, me, me. People me, me, don't me. understand you, that you, respect you. and reverence will take you a long way in your marriage. Even in your let me tell you something, my ladies who are girlfriends who are trying to get rings and get married. If he see, cause see, a lot of times they be thinking, oh, we got to live together. Oh, we, I got to do this too. Oh, I got to be cooking and cleaning and washing and all of this kind of stuff. Respect and reverence ain't got nothing to do with you cooking and cleaning and washing and all of this kind of stuff. No, this got, this got everything to do with the way you treat him. How you come in every single situation. Every single situation down to, um, going into the store and getting a cold drink, considering him. To say, sweetheart, I'm about to go to the store. Do you need anything? But some of y'all will get up and go, and the man don't even know you gone to the store, let alone asking him, do he even need anything? And when he said, well, why you ain't tell me you was going to the store? Your response is, I ain't got to tell you where I'm going. Is you going to pay for it? Is you, you was, you was going to give me the money to pay for it? What I'm checking in with you for? You ain't my husband. You will not be his wife acting like that. And what I'm saying is, I know this to be true. Man, because there's so many things that men see in women that, like, we are reactionless. You know what I'm saying? Like, our mind be in overdrive the moment we, we meet you. Like, we, go, we determine already how far we're about to go with you. So, it's not no question of, is this a good man or not? He didn't decide it already if he want to be a good man to you or not in his own mind. So it's about your attitude, how you carry yourself, that determines what you attract. If a lot of people be talking about why I attract this and why I attract that. Think about your attitude Ooh. and what you represent. Like if you're a woman who goes out into the public with your bonnet on, just know a, a, a decent man with, with, with a, a, like, that's just the basic, you know, scenario. You, you out in public with your bonnet on, ain't no self-respecting man going to respect you. And that's just the truth. He's like, not gonna approach you. I'm, 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 I'm and not even. He's not gonna approach you because he don't respect. He automatically lost all respect for you when he seen that. Okay, so let's talk about this here. You made a um a statement just a second ago. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness! It slipped my mind just that quick. Okay, we'll come back to it. Oh yes, 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 yes. Thank you, baby. Yeah, all right. Um, I knew she was gonna because she be. <laughs> She be on me like, what you said again? Say it again. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> a lot of times people don't understand that our attitudes about life in general, men observe if we carry a positive spirit or if we carry a, a spirit that's always on that dumb shit. Yeah. Or they pay attention to the things that we entertain, the things that we feed ourselves daily. And when I'm saying feed ourselves, I'm not talking about food. I'm talking about how you spend your time. How do you, um, when you have free time, what are you doing with it? Are you on Facebook, which is fine? Or are you reading a book, which is fine? Or what type of programming do you like to watch on TV? In other words, he's paying attention to what you feeding yourself. He's paying attention to the content that you're taking in. Because believe it or not, a lot of content that we take in play a major role in the way we move in life. In other words, if all I see you entertaining is fuck a nigga, fuck a nigga, fuck a nigga, he ain't shit, he ain't shit, he a dog, he ain't shit, he ain't gonna do nothing but cheat. Yeah, but at the same time, you posting up your ass back facing the camera every day, all day. Like, he know that he could come and try and he might get away with it and might leave you a little prison on the way. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people don't understand is when you when when women enrolling into this feminine touch wife school, my job is to change her mentality, the way she feels about marriage, the institution of it, the way she feels about men, let alone her husband. I'm talking about men in general. It's 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 to create longevity in relationships. Period. Not just relationships with your husband. Your husband. Relationships with people. Period. How you carry yourself. Your mentality. Just opening your mind to other people and, and, and expanding past your everyday thought process to just me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. And what I think and what I feel. And it's got to be right because this person said it or that person taught me. 
and all of that type of stuff. It's a bigger picture. Okay. So let me say this here. You know, this weekend I posted up a picture of how to properly set an informal dinner table and how to properly set a formal dinner table. And I had no idea that so many women would be offended about setting a dinner table and... For real, she got me getting hate mail about the people. Oh, Lord, they done started contacting <laughs> I say, look, this is how you know you done made it. When people started sending you hate mail and all kind of shit like that, they... they I, I hadn't checked my emails yet, uh, but they, it might have came to my email, but they decided to send it to his work phone. Yeah. But when you start getting hate mail and hate speech and all these threats and stuff... That's uh, they say you'd have made it at that point, so I guess we might be the made it a little bit. I don't know, but <laughs> but anyway, I have never <laughs> thought that teaching people how to formally set a informal dinner table, dinner table versus a formal dinner table. I never knew that talking about dishes and how to set a table would offend so many people. I never thought by teaching them how to correctly put your white wine glass and your red wine glass and your water glass would offend so many people. But you know what I had to understand and God showed me this morning? Some people don't ever see themselves on their level. Some people don't ever see themselves inviting certain type of guests to their home to even be able to set a table up to present it to them like that. Some people don't even see themselves ever utilizing this information. Because they have never been to a restaurant that didn't have televisions that actually when you walked in that the water glass was already on the table and all of your real napkins and real uh, tablecloths were on the table. Some people don't see themselves living on that type of level. Yeah. But the thing is, I know it to be true because I have seen how God has graced us in the circles that he have allowed us to be a part of, even with just our marriage ministry. If you ever came to anything that Mr. Knox planned for our marriage ministry, you better believe it is five stars. And if you don't know how to use our little lit forks, you're going to learn that night how to use them. Mm -hmm. Because everything that you saw on that diagram was going to be laid right out there in front of you in, in your, with your real eyes to be able to see it. So I know that these things are important. And I even had women to inbox me and say, thank you for posting this. I'm going to teach my children how to utilize all of these utensils. And when they learn it, I'm going to take them to a restaurant and allow them to, to you know, experience, experience it. it. We got to think on a higher level. I was telling him, I watch all kind of different programming and shows. And I was learning about, now, okay, I know how to set the table, but how, how do you even seat your guests at the table? You seat your guests according to if they know each other. You, you seat your guests according to their interests, if they in the same lines of work. And you even can seat your guests according to the languages that they speak. But us, we don't ever feel like we're going to ever get in the company of people that might speak different languages to have to even know what we're going to sit them at. But my God has already showed me that this is just the beginning. We are still young people. And there's so many people to meet. So much so much more to do. There is work to be done. And I cannot get distracted by the people who are going to fall off on the wayside anyway. What I understand is the people who are making the most noise, they ain't never got no interest in esteeming their husbands. They don't ever have an interest in supporting, supporting nothing other than what they feel like they got going on. So even I can't get distracted because see last night they was a bunch of cum buckets. Oh baby, I told them, baby, look, you don't. You, I am the one person that you just don't want to go to war with on this internet because people is sending me your whole facts right now. They was coming back, right and I wasn't asking for nothing. <laughs> they just seen her, but you know what? Like one of my, I said, what one of <laughs> some somebody in business. Send me a message and say, look, I know how you feel, but she can't get no clout off of you. She can't get no clout. And I say, baby, you ain't got to ever worry about me mentioning her name, baby, because she ain't that important. Ain't nobody important but who? God. God. All right. I told you. Told you. Ain't nobody <laughs> important but God, baby. So the work has to get done. Respect and reverence. 
Respect is how we mentally feel about people. When the principal get up to speak, we be quiet because we want to hear what he got to say because it's important. When our pastor get up to speak, we be quiet because we want to hear what they got to say. But guess what? When our husband speak, you got to be quiet because you got to hear what he got to say. And even I had to learn to stop over talking my husband, this man right here on the side of me, when he's trying to make his point, because I'm trying to make my point, and I'm trying to get you to see it my way, and I'm trying to convince you that my way is the better way, and I had to learn that, you know what, Sharonda, be quiet, allow Spencer to talk, say what he got to say, and if you feel like you got something else that you want to add to his plan, then you bring what you think that will be beneficial to add to his plan. Don't come bringing him your plan. But see, you got to really be able to trust the person that God has placed you with. But when I say everybody ain't, everybody marriage, I'm not saying that their marriage can't get to a certain level. But some people pick their husbands and don't mm -hmm. allow their husbands to pick them. Exactly. And it's a difference. It's a big difference. Because it's a difference. A man finds a wife and like... He finds you. He's so, surprised. So the thing is, you better believe if you went out there and picked your husband, I can also expect that you're the one who's trying to lead the marriage. Yeah. Out of order. Out of order. But okay. Respect. Yeah, out of order. And reverence. <laughs> Respect is how you mentally feel. The reverence is the action behind it. When I zip these lips, that's the reverence. Meaning... That I, I respect you enough to close my mouth to listen to what you got to say. I remember there were point in times where I used to feel like um, my grandmother, mommy, I just say like, Lord, mommy don't understand. She she don't understand the times that we in right now. We need a pager. We need a pager. And mommy say, don't nobody need pagers but working people and drug dealers. Y'all ain't working no way and y'all don't sell no dope. So you don't need no pager. But mommy, you don't understand. We need a pager. We, we need a pager. But... What I understood was, see, you when, when you was growing up, when I was growing up, you couldn't keep getting in them old people's face talking about your idea, your suggestion, what you needed, because they you knew that they had backed the hell out of you right quick. It was so, exactly. So, the way, the, because I respected her and I wanted to keep my mouth, I, I knew how to shut the hell up. But see, this generation, these young women that's in their 18, 21, 25, I, they don't know nothing about that. They they ain't, ain't never seen nobody reference nothing. All yeah, they have seen is they people pop out. The thing is, the reference is very important because we will leave your ass about your mouth. Like, it's all kind of things that will happen about your mouth, especially if you're a man like me because I, you know, I don't like that. Like, I don't like to be into it. Like, we don't like conflict. We don't like confusion. We like to always be able to, because, like, you got to understand, we go through so much outside of our homes. When we come home, we don't want to have to argue with our spouse, the person that we love the most in the world, about nothing. So, in order for that, to take, you gotta have a reference. You gotta, they gotta have a hierarchy. Somebody gotta be able to say, you know what, this is the plan, and we gonna end this right now before this go turns into this and that. Because if both of y'all trying to be the head, you know what I'm saying? If you got two chiefs and no Indians, like y'all losing, y'all going in two different directions. Mm hmm. Respect and reverence. I told him, I said, baby, in your 22, 23 years of knowing me, when have I ever used the word reverence? When have I ever used that word? I have never used the word never reverence. Ever. I woke up yesterday and God gave me two words and it was respect and reverence. And I'm like, where's this coming from? Because I don't even talk like this. But the thing is, when God sent a word, he talk loud. He talk loud. And sometimes what I even I have to understand is Satan has no interest in you elevating your family. He has no interest in you elevating your marriage. He has no interest in you elevating your your uh, connection with your spouse. He has no interest in you respecting your spouse, giving reverence to your spouse. He has no interest in your family excelling on no level. So I can expect him to come in and try to be a distraction to this great work that's going on because he don't have an interest in nobody learning or elevating or doing anything better. And then the thing about it is when you think that you are the strongest person you know, he gonna use you to attack yourself. 
I kid you not. One mm -hmm. thing that I saw was that woman that was doing all that. I just looked on her page for a brief second, and the first thing I saw was how much she wanted to be loved. That was the one thing that stood out to me. And this is what I know. A lot of women want to be loved. And a lot of women are angry because they feel like they have gotten a short end of the stick over and over and over again when it comes down to men. But let me ask you this. What are you putting out there to the world when people see you? Because if you keep getting the short end of the stick, you the common denominator with all of these men. It's something that you putting out there that makes them feel like they could do that to you. Mm -hmm. If you saw your mama with bad man after bad man after bad man and nobody that she was with ever did any good, what did your mama put out there to the world to where these type of men felt like they could come into your mama life? Exactly. So when you live in your life and you see that you keep attracting the same filth and garbage over and over and over again, it's it's you got to self-reflect. You got to look at yourself and say, what am I putting out there to the world? Why do this trash keep coming to me? Yeah, because one thing about this union, that, like we did not, like, like we didn't start this off like, like that. We started off on a good foot and we have fought ever since to keep it together. You know, it ain't been easy, you know, but relationships are work and nobody wants to put the work in. Yes. People I don't want to be on the same page and it's so easy for you to have a respectful conversation but how many of us actually do that we don't know because we have not been taught how to allow people to talk we have not been taught conflict resolution skills we have not been taught that if you're not adding to it and a lot of times what happens is when the conversation not going the way we wanted to go we start tearing the other person down that's the that's the way we have been taught to communicate and that don't do nobody no good and see that's why this this school is so important. A lot of y'all saying, I don't understand why would somebody go pay to go to a wife's school? If you could do it on your own, you would have been done it. Oh, well, you ain't got to do nothing but go to your pastor. And your pastor, um, your, your pa you don't need to do this to go to your pastor. But the divorce rate at your church is so high. And half the women that come to the church is coming with our husbands. Mm -hmm. And if the pastor could have helped y'all, saved y'all, he would have done it a long time ago or she would have done it a long time ago if that was their interest. Yeah. But the thing is, God all over this. And I don't have, I was screaming to the mountaintops that God is all over this. And I'm doing what he told me to do in this season. And one thing I know is some people are going to jump on the train, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to jump on the train and their life is going to change. When I, I'm not saying that their marriage is going to change. Their life is going to change. From these principles, these teachings, their life is going to change. And they understand that they can invest this money because their life is going to change. Yeah, but you're going to have some that, people that's going to watch these people get on the train. And guess what? They're going to be on. The, they're going to see the train take off and go. And these people are going to go and they're going to live their best lives. And they're going to have wonderful marriages. And they're going to travel the world. And then the next generation behind them are going to have strong, healthy marriages. And the next generation behind them are going to have strong, healthy marriages. All from a what $500 investment yeah. that, that yeah. somebody decided to make. To start somewhere. To because start somewhere. It's like, it, it's yeah. an investment. It's an investment. Like, it's, with anything, like, if you want to be a housewife. You want to live. You want somebody to take care of you and all of this type of shit. And you don't even want to have, you don't even want to reverence the person you want to do it. Oh my goodness. That's a whole nother video because a lot of people, <laughs> they, they say that they want a man to be a provider, but I want to have the conversation. When you say you want a man to be a provider, what does that mean to you? That's a whole nother video though, but it's coming. It is coming. When you say you want a man to be a provider to you, what does that mean to you? And what are you going to be doing while they are providing? You can't expect no man to want to go out there and bust ass and work and then you want to come bring him a damn plate full of food loaded down on a fucking paper plate that's bending every which way. And I'm going to say this and I'm about to end it. <laughs> you better leave him alone. All right, I'm going to leave him alone. Please. Okay, so a lot of people say that my husband don't require, my husband don't, uh, that he go buy it, he go do this to my husband do this to let me say this here. A lot, I, I went live on this page because men and women can see this. A lot of men, they just don't know. A lot of men have never seen their father even be reverenced. Yeah. The, the, the closest they done seen it was their granddaddy. 
Meaning they didn't even see the closest generation to them, which is their mama, doing these type of things. But it does not mean that it's not important. It does not mean that it's not necessary. It does not mean that it should not be done. And it does not mean that you're less of a woman. Oh, no. <laughs> I actually feel like you are a greater woman when you can humble yourself enough to esteem somebody else. I do. I feel like you're a greater woman when you can humble yourself to esteem somebody else, to elevate somebody else. And it's not making them your God. But I want to know because, see, it's certain order, right? God is, because some people say, I say, if you not married, who is your head? God, my head, he your spiritual head. But he give you a head in the natural as well. And your head in the natural is your husband. And if you don't have a husband, then your head in the natural is your father. And if you don't have a father, your head in the natural is your pastor. It's, in, in everything, there is order. In everything, there is order. So I'm saying all of that to say this. Sometimes y'all have husbands who just don't know. But the problem is when they find out this good information and they start having an expectation to be treated in such a way, are you going to be able to step up? Yeah, because that's a requirement too. It's not, it's not yeah. easy to be able to change the, your whole way of thinking to reverence this person who you have not been reverencing. He yeah. gonna think something wrong. Yeah, he gonna you, look at you, you crazy. You gonna start <laughs> referencing and, and start a, and start attending to his needs in such a manner to you gonna scare the shit out of him. Yeah. Cause he gonna be like, I don't know what didn't happen. I, I don't know, but I just know it's a change that then came on the scene. But let me tell you something, sweetheart. It's a good change that has come on the scene. It is a really good change. And the thing is, I have this is how we have lived our lives, and the reason but I'm why just now at you crazy sharing with you. The reason why he's looking at you crazy is because he wanted to continue. He don't want this to just be a moment in time, just a flicker. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that same energy. Keep it up. It's, it's nothing wrong with it, sweetheart. It's nothing wrong with it. And like I said, a lot of times your man ain't saying nothing because he simply just don't know. He just don't know. He don't know no better, baby. He don't know no better. But let me tell you, if he ever experienced a woman that treats him in such a manner, you ain't going to stand a chance. Y'all got to, like, <laughs> men, men are the kings. of Y'all Y'all don't think we pick our battles, but we pick our battles. Like, a lot of stuff we just don't even worry about because we know that it's a losing battle. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all, with this reverence, y'all going to have to start the process. Y'all going to have to deal with him looking at you crazy mm -hmm. and not believing in the change and thinking that you done lost your mind or something because you it's just too good to be true. Like, it's, it's going to happen if you start to do the right thing. But in the same at the same time, you're going to start to see him reverence you more. He gonna, you're going to start to see a whole other change in him also. You see what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's it's a trade off. Like you want you want it to elevate, but you got to stop the circle of negativity. You got to start somewhere. So start to elevate him, and he gonna start to elevate you even more. Like it is it, the and, possibilities and, are endless once you you start to just sit down and come together instead of always being at odds. And and the thing is, even when he reverence you, it ain't got to be in your. It could be out of your presence, meaning that he could see, or it it could been things that he been doing and been into. But you know what? He'll say, you know what? My wife is really changing and putting forth such an effort. I'm trying to get home. Let me go home to my wife. I know this to be true because I had so many women who are or dating. You know, when you got a group of women, primarily everybody from the same city, you bound to have some wives and side chicks in the group together. But the side chicks is telling me, Sharonda, you need to put some type of uh, mingle, uh, uh, um, what, what you call it? The singles put some type of event together for the singles. Because the side chicks getting left because these <laughs> men ain't ain't calling on them like they used to. These men ain't spending time like they used to. And you know what? Now this married man and his wife is doing date night now because see she didn't she didn't start listening to my teachings and the wife got the date night now this shit going on and you you let me tell you something about a side woman she keeps up with that man baby she keeps up with that man and she know everything that him and his wife doing because she on his Facebook and everything and now. She see that they are going on date nights and they got little weekend getaways and they going not this, the side woman starting to feel salty because she like wait 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 what's going on because they used to be me and you doing all that <laughs> but not me and you ain't doing all that no more now you're doing it with your wife but the truth is he been wanting to do it with his wife the whole time yeah you was just a placeholder 
he he been wanting to be on that type of level with his wife. But for whatever reason, he wasn't getting what he needed at home. And that's how you came into play. So what I'm saying is these other women ain't going to stand a chance when you respect and you reverence your husband. And you got to, if you're going to be with him, you got to learn how to forgive and you got to be able to extend grace. Okay. I'm going I'm to let it go on that because we is over our time. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. Uh, sex talk with Sharonda. Mm -hmm. Again, we let me tell you the the train for white school has loaded, and the train is getting ready to take off. And it's gonna roll over your ass if you get in the way. <laughs> it's gonna roll over you if you try to get in the way of God's work. Don't get in God. What what the man say? You in God's business? Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Hold your text and leave don't, me alone. Don't do that. <laughs> and don't text my husband unless you're trying to book a photo shoot. Yeah. <laughs> so, y'all, I'm so excited about my workbooks, y'all. Y'all don't even... I, I got them, and I was just like, Lord. She want a goddamn spaceship. We're going to get her a spaceship. <laughs> I'm like, Lord. I'm, I'm so excited about what God is doing, y'all. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I think that's all I want to say. I'm just so excited. I'm happy. I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm so excited. Y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all be blessed. <laughs>